So welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about different IDEs for Java. So you know when you talk about software development, so when you learn a new language, you have to always start with Notepad, right? So well, let's say you when you started with C programming, when you started with C plus plus or Java. So I'm sure you started with Notepad, Notepad, right, or Notepad plus plus. But when once you go towards software development, so we have to use some type of IDEs because to work with different frameworks. Like when you talk about Java, we have Sturge framework for web development. We have Spring framework, which is Spring MVC for web development. So if you want to implement all these different concepts, we have to, of course, we have to use some type of IDE. If you're a .NET fan, so for .NET, we have a Microsoft Visual Studio. So that's our IDE for .NET. That does, I guess that's the only choice you have. But if you talk about Java, we have lots of things. And that's what makes it uh, more difficult to choose your IDE. If you're, developed, if you're working for an enterprise, if you're working for a company, so of course, your company will decide which IDE you should use. But let's say you're working on your own project, you, are, you, are, you have your own startup, which IDE to choose? Now, there are multiple IDEs, so we have NetBeans, we have Eclipse, we have IntelliJ, we have, uh, what do you have? We have JDeveloper, we have JBoss Studio, we have lots of IDEs, right? Now, so let's start with the first one, which is my, one of my favorite, which is NetBeans. <coughs> so when we talk about NetBeans, so NetBeans is an IDE which provides you lots of features learn Java. So if you want to learn Java in NetBeans, everything, it will give you everything. This, uh, like example, we have shortcuts, we have, uh, so let's say you're working on Swing programming, which is GUI Swing. In that, you can just drag and drop your components. And when you drag and drop, you will directly get the component. You don't have to create those components using new keyword. So that's your NetBeans. Now, uh, NetBeans provides you lots of uh, support. So let's say you want to create a web application. So for web application, to run that, you have Tomcat, you have Glassfish. So you can either use Tomcat, you can, you can use Glassfish. The advantage of Glassfish is Glassfish is also an app server. So you can run... Uh, what do you say, EJB projects plus uh, Tom, what do you say, the servlet projects. Okay, so that's NetBeans. The next one is Eclipse. Now, as per industry standards, everyone use Eclipse. Now, the advantage of using Eclipse is, it is lightweight. So when you compare NetBeans and Eclipse, Eclipse is lightweight than NetBeans because when you open NetBeans, if you have 2GB RAM, your machine will hang. Okay, you will find, you will find some lags there. But if you're using Eclipse, you, it will be like normal, it will not lag much. So as per industry standards, everyone use Eclipse because the first advantage, it is lightweight. The second advantage, so let's say I'm a founder of a new framework. So let's say um, I have made my own framework called as ABC framework. So of course, I want to provide some libraries or some features to, to a particular IDE. Now, which one I will choose, which is open, right? So Eclipse is open, so I will create those new framework to support Eclipse. That's why all different Java frameworks works on Eclipse. I'm not saying it doesn't work on NetBeans, but it works more faster or more smoother in Eclipse. In fact, if you know about uh, Red Hat own app server, which is JBoss. So now we have a new version of uh, Eclipse called as JBoss Developer Studio, only for if you're making a app for specifically for JBoss. Let's say you're working on Spring Framework. Which is a latest framework in Java. So if you are working on Spring Framework, so for Spring Framework, we have a what do you say, the uh, flavor of Eclipse, which is STS, which is Spring Tools Suite. So the advantage of using Eclipse is all different industries they use Eclipse, different frameworks they work on Eclipse. In fact, when Android was first launched for developers, uh, you can create your Android apps. You, you, at that time, people used to create those those Android apps in Eclipse before Android Studio. So we have NetBeans and we have Eclipse. After that, we have something called a J uh, Developer, which is a combination of Notepad and JDK inbuilt. Uh, so if you if you don't want to use the advanced feature of NetBeans and Eclipse, you can use J Developer if you are learning something. Uh, if you have a machine which with low RAM and low CPU power, of course you cannot use NetBeans Developer. Then we also have BlueJ. We have all these different uh, IDEs. I, I don't think anybody anybody could have uh, they are using now. But the industry perspective, we have NetBeans and Eclipse. Most famous is Eclipse. Now we have one more, which is one of the best IDE ever. Okay, which is IntelliJ. 
Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you use IntelliJ, but it's awesome. You know, when you're when you're working on a project, and you have a concept in your mind, you don't have to focus on syntax. Just type the concept. It will, you know, type a line. It will give you suggestions. It will give you lots of suggestions. That's the advantage of using uh, uh, this one, IntelliJ. But there's a one trick here, uh, one catch. Uh, IntelliJ is not free. Okay, so if you are using it for personal use or for one one machine use, it is free. But if you are buying for enterprise use or for commercial use, you have to buy IntelliJ and you have to pay a chunk of money. Okay, so if your company can invest in your uh, IDE, that's well and good. Otherwise, you have to buy IntelliJ by yourself. In fact, the what the Advan the Android Studio IDE, which which is used for Android development. It is powered by IntelliJ. So whenever you open uh, Android Studio, you can see that it returns uh, powered by IntelliJ. Okay, so one of the best IDE for Java is IntelliJ. But if you if you don't want to buy, you can use Eclipse. And if you want to learn something new, or if you want to uh, if you are learning Java language, you can start with NetBeans. Uh, that's for this video. So we we'll use whichever uh, IDE you want. And if you have some more ideas in your mind, just do comment so that if, if I can just. Uh, create one more video on that how those things works so i would suggest use eclipse so thanks for thanks for watching and do subscribe